Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Life in the Universe pandemic series. It's nearly midnight, so I'm going to keep very quiet as I don't want to wake up my neighbours. I hope you're all doing well during this lockdown. So this evening's um, topic of discussion is the astrobiology of nighttime. How strange is this phenomenon that we have here on the Earth where we have day and night? It's something that all of us take for granted characteristic of our planet but in fact it's not something that may necessarily be universal uh, to other biospheres and life forms if they exist out there. The first thing to notice is that our day is 24 hours long. That's a pretty obvious statement but it hasn't always been like that. Um, when Earth uh, established itself uh, with life and was when life had become um, well ensconced on our planet about three and a half billion years ago, the day length was probably something like 10 hours, five hours of daylight, five hours of nighttime. And our planet has actually been slowing down. Its spin has been slowing down over uh, its lifetime caused by tidal interactions with the moon. This tidal interaction is actually causing the moon to recede today at about 3.8 centimeters a year. But one of the consequences of this tidal interaction is that the day length is actually slowing down and it will continue to slow down uh, well into the future uh, such that the day length will increase up to 30 hours and beyond in the next sort of billion years. We know that this is not speculation. You can actually look at the growth rings in shelled creatures that live in the oceans and you can show that the day length has been slowing down over time. So you can imagine that very strange experience of walking out onto an early land mass on early Earth and experiencing, say, a 10 hour day. And it would have had uh, great differences for things like photosynthetic organisms that rely on sunlight. Their daily cycles, their diurnal cycles would have been very different than um, today. Another aspect of nighttime during this during this period would be that the moon would have been much larger in the night sky. It was much closer than it is today, probably at least half the distance. And so the moon itself would have been um, a very prominent feature of the night sky. Of course, our own day length is particular to this planet. It turns out, quite interestingly, that Mars has a similar day length, 24 hours and 39 minutes. So if you want to go and live on Mars, you actually don't need to do much adjusting to live there. Of course, the year is much longer because it's a larger orbit, 668 days instead of 367, but the day length is about the same, which is good news for future Martian pioneers. Now, out there in the universe, there may be some very strange planets with different night times and day night cycles. For example, planets around M stars, and M stars are very cool stars, may be tidally locked. And what this means is that when the planet is orbiting the star, the same face is always pointed towards the star. So one side of the planet has perpetual uh, daytime, and the other side of the planet has perpetual nighttime. And people once thought it would be impossible for such a planet to even have an atmosphere, and therefore it could never be habitable. Because it's very cold on one side, the whole atmosphere would freeze out. But more recent models suggest that if there's enough circulation in the atmosphere, the atmosphere does not necessarily have to freeze out. So we can imagine maybe planets um, that are in the habitable zone, the zone around a star where there could be liquid water on the surface of the planet, um, but one side would always be light and one side would always be dark. You can conjure up uh, some thoughts about what that would mean for biology. You can imagine maybe uh, creatures living under perpetual uh, starlight and other creatures living in complete darkness, almost a permanent state of a nocturnal biosphere. And of course, if you were an intelligence living on such a planet, you can imagine having a house under perpetual uh, starlight. And when you get bored, you go to your holiday home on the dark side of the planet just for a bit of variation, maybe some cross country skiing in complete darkness on the dark side of your M star planet. And then during the sun, 
during the summer when you want to go swimming and enjoy the beaches, you travel around to the permanently light side of your M star planet. All sorts of strange possibilities for planets with different types of night times. There's also a very interesting phenomenon of the night sky. If you walk out of your house and look at the night sky, you will notice that there are stars in the sky, little white specks giving off light. And a long time ago, people wondered, why isn't the night sky perpetually bright, completely white? And this is called Ober's paradox. And the reason why the paradox exists is because if the universe is infinite and full of stars, then it must follow that all of that starlight would light up the night sky and make it perpetually white. So why isn't that the case? Well, it seems to be that perhaps many stars throughout the universe, uh, their light has not yet even arrived at our planet. As the universe expands outwards, many of the stars in, in the universe, um, their starlight has not reached the Earth. And so instead of seeing a completely white night sky, we just see those stars whose light has managed to reach our planet. Another interesting conundrum is this, that when the Big Bang occurred, when the universe first formed, it would have given off a vast quantity of light. So why isn't the night sky full of the bright flash of the Big Bang, making nighttime completely white, bright white light from that early Big Bang? Well, the universe is, of course, expanding. And as the material in the universe expands, the light from all that material is stretched to longer wavelengths. And the radiation that was formed in the uh, Big Bang at the beginning of the universe has been stretched into the microwave region of the spectrum. So you can't actually see it with your own eyes. So in fact, the night sky is full of the faint uh, buzz or the light of the radiation given off in the Big Bang, but because it's been stretched to microwave regions of the spectrum, you can't see it. But if you could see in the microwave, you would indeed see a night sky all aglow with the radiation from the formation of the Big Bang, or formation of the universe. So, so these are some of the conundrums that have been thought about with respect to the astrobiology of nighttime. Another thing you might want to think about is that many organisms on our planet are adapted to using these strange conditions on our planet. For example, moonlight um, is used by some creatures to navigate and to uh, allow them to set the timing. For example, um, some organisms that come up onto beaches during moonlight to lay their eggs, for instance. Uh, set their times by moonlight. Um, the mating cycles and the breeding cycles and the egg laying cycles of many sea creatures that live in the intertidal region around the edges of continents is set by moonlight. So that's a very interesting astrobiological aspect. Uh, creatures on our planet that set their clocks by the light given off by the moon just because our planet happens to have a large moon that reflects light. But of course, many planets throughout the universe may not have large moons. And we can imagine that if there are biospheres and life uh, on other planets in the universe, many of those planets would not have moons. And therefore, the idea of, of biology um, regulating itself from the light of a giant moon would be an utterly alien and strange idea. There are also um, creatures on our planet that use the stars to navigate. So dung beetles that uh, collect together dung in the desert and roll those balls of dung into their nests, use the stars of the Milky Way to navigate. And that's interesting because that is not something that is very specific to our planet. You can imagine that creatures on any planet in the Milky Way galaxy could use the stars of the galaxy to navigate. So there are certain features of the night sky, like the Milky Way and the stars, that are sort of universal to other planets in our galaxy and could be used to uh, regulate or moderate biology. But there are certain things about the night sky, such as our moon, that are really quite specific to biology on our planet. So there are lots of things to think about um, to do with biology and the night and uh, what we see in the night sky and how, our, how fast our planet happens to rotate as it goes in its orbit around the sun. Lots of fascinating questions 
about the astrobiology of night time. So that's the end of this lecture. Thank you very much for joining me again. Maybe as you walk out of your house to get a breath of fresh air when no one's watching and you can uh, escape the confines of lockdown and look out look up into the night sky, you can think about some of the astrobiology of nighttime. Thank you for joining me. Good night.